chapter 2, verse 1. For a little warning across the thing, if you don't want to pay taxes and go against the government, this, this program is not for you. We'll give you time to go have some tea. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus, a Roman, that all the world, for God so loved the world, people should be taxed. Uh, I don't want to pay taxes. Go get my tea. Isn't it funny how we got tea parties today in America? Americans don't drink tea. They drink coffee. At a coffee party. Then I will go. I want his iced coffee. I know I'm making fun of you. Because you people were trying to vote against taxes. You don't know what the Bible says. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor over Syria. So Cyrenius came up with the taxing. And all went to be taxed. All. Everyone. They went to be taxed. Everyone in, to his own city. What we're seeing now is an act of the Roman government doing something that God wants to be done. Two one. Dr. John Elder says regular enrollment of taxes taxpayers was the Feature, uh, was the feature of Roman rule and census about every 14 years. Papyrus rolls from Egypt prove it to be so. For about every 14 years, the Roman government would come up with a taxation. Since Augustus records that he set out about early in his reign to organize the empire, the first census may have been either 23 or 22 BC or 9 to 8 BC the latter would be the census of the Gospel of Luke this would be Elder J 1960 prophets idols and diggers New York Bob Merrill company pages 159 to 60 so this time right here according to what is recorded in history would be 9 to 8 BC. Well, guess who's going to be born? Our calendars are already wrong. 2 2. Chapter 2, verse 2, when it comes to taxation. This is Dr. Clifford Wilson, archaeologist. Critics challenged about Bible's claim that Quirinius, Latin for Cyrus, was governor over Syria. Well, that's not true. He wasn't in the Syria. He was governor at the time of the census 14 years later, A.D. 6. But it turns out that he was also a high officer in Central Asia in eight. BC actually being in charge of the army in Syria it appears that he was able to disappoint a local uprising that probably delayed the operation or fulfillment of the pull tax in Syria for some time so the law I mean not the law the the history recounts one thing the Bible is right and scholarship is wrong. All right, just write that down. The Bible's right, man is wrong. Now, so all went to be taxed. 
everyone into his own city. And I assume if you were to go into an archaeology study of verses 1 and 2 of these men in great detail, you would find 100% of the facts of the Bible is true by what these men left behind in writing. The Bible's right. And Joseph also went and joined a political game to get rid of the taxation and to fight the government because he wanted to save the money to give it to his church and, and have good. That's not what he did. By the way, if, if you were to save your money from taxation, you won't give it to church. You won't give it to God what you say. Because most of you who are involved in fighting taxes don't give the church. And Joseph also went up mountain from Galilee. Now Galilee is up north. Out of the city of Nazareth. That's important. Unto Judea, the city of David, which is Bethlehem. Because he was of the house and lineage of David. It's about, I got here about 70 plus or minus miles. So, God placed a ruler to enforce a law to make two people to go to Bethlehem. You say, what are you saying, Starley? Give me a reason why Mary and Joseph would be in Bethlehem. I'll give you time. What's your answer? Why would they be there? Oh, honey. Let's go to Bethlehem. I hear it's good this time of year. Oh no, Mary, come on. We want to go watch. We want to go see where the future footsteps of our our son will be in Jerusalem. Let's go to Let's go to the Holy Land. Oh dear, wait for the baby to be born, then we'll go. Now, Joseph and Mary, and I made laughing Jeff about. It, they would go to Jerusalem three times a year. Why would they have to go to Bethlehem? There are 48 prophecies of the Lord Jesus Christ. Why would they want to go to Bethlehem? Let's see Psalm 75 verse 5. Psalm 75 verse 5. I'm still waiting why you think that why they would make a plan on their own to go to Bethlehem. 75 verse 5, Psalm. Psalm 75 verse 5 through 7. This may be a mix up. Lift not up the lift not up your horn on high, speak not with a stiff neck. For promotion cometh neither from the east, nor from the west, nor from the south. But God is judge. He putteth down one and set up another. God set a king, a ruler, whatever you want to call him, in the Roman Empire, and that ruler said, I'm going to tax the people. Who gives the promotion? Come from the east, come from the west, come from the south, but God is judge. Why do we have Obama as president? Who promoted him? We those those people voted for him. No, the promotion came from God. He put it down one, Bush. I think that was the president before him. I don't even know. And set up another. Here he is, president. 
We don't want them. Impeach them. Impeach them. Impeach them. And you may be ruining what God is starting to do. Do you think Augustus was a saved man to help the nation? No, he was taxing them. He was angering the people just like the president today is angering the people. But it's an act of God. I'm not talking about tornadoes. I'm not talking about flooding. I'm talking about the rulership of the government. Obama is in government because God allowed it. Even if he bowed down to Satan and said, I will rule the kingdoms, I will worship you, Satan, he still has to get the power from God, Job 1 and Job 2. And when that ruler in Luke says, I want you, to, I'm going to tax the people, that is something that God said for a reason. <clears throat> Augustus, yes, Lord, I want you to tax those people. Okay, but they're not going to like me. I don't care what you, I don't care. Do it. I don't like taxes, no. Maybe you should give your money to the Lord and missionaries more than other junk and garbage. All right. Daniel chapter 2. Daniel chapter 2. I'm sorry you don't like Obama. When you get to heaven, you tell God, I don't like the man that you put in that office. Oh, we vote. Your vote is higher than God? Daniel chapter 2, verse 20. You mean think Americans vote in... Oh, oh man. Oh, man. Oh, Michael. Gabriel. Give me a bottle of aspirin. They voted for a Mormon in, in the White House, and I, I can't do nothing about it. Oh, it's me. <clears throat> you know? You know? All right, 20. Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever, for wisdom and might are his. He changes the time and the season. Global warming, El Nemo! El Shut Up oh. It's God! Isn't that great how we're. How we're he removeth king. We don't have a king. We're getting there. We got, a, we got a president of the United States that's violated the Constitution and doesn't let Congress uh, vote for what he does. That's a dictatorship. And set it up, King. He, God, giveth wisdom unto the wise and knowledge to them that know understanding. Job 28, 28, when you check that one out. Guess who puts people into offices, whether it be kings or presidents? Uh, that the writer of Psalm says, and the writer of Daniel said, which is Daniel. Daniel 4.17. See, we've got to build a foundation here. Daniel 4.17. This matter is by the decree of the watchers and demand by the word of the Holy One to the tent that the living may know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men, and giveth it to whosoever he will. Why didn't we get the moron, a Mormon, in the presidency instead of who we got now? Because God giveth to whomever he will. Do you know why we have an un-American who doesn't, doesn't follow the laws of this country, who does not do what he's supposed to do in this country because America is un-American and they don't follow the laws and they don't do what they're supposed to be doing. God will give a nation a leader that represents what the nation is like. You know what this nation is like? It's like Obama. All messed up. You think Clinton was a joke? That's what this country's all about. Stepping out on your wife in the office. You think Bush was a joke? We'll do anything for oil.
Proverbs 21 1. Well, I thought you talked about taxes. I am. Talk about leadership. Augustus was put on the throne by God and given a degree by God to tax the people for a reason. 21.1. The king's heart is in the hand of the Lord. As the rivers of water, he turneth it, God turneth it, whithersoever he, God, will. Solomon says, I'm in, I am here on this throne of Jerusalem because God put me and whatever happens, God has made me to do it. The writer of Proverbs is King Solomon. You may not like the leader of your country, but God may have put him on that office. For a particular reason. And God don't have to explain anything to you. Do you think, and listen, Joseph was a just man. You think, God, why do I have to go down there and go pay taxes? Uh, I'm not going to do it. You think Joseph did that? 1 Samuel 15, 23. We're building a foundation here. 1 Samuel 15, 23. We gotta find out who Augustus is. He is in a position that God allowed. 23, 15, 23. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. So had Joseph not paid his taxes, he would be sinning. And stubbornness is as the iniquity of idolatry. I'm not going to give to the crowd. I'm not going to have to take my. Rah, 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 rah. You're sinning. Because thou has rejected the word of the Lord. That's what Adam did. Adam, thou shalt not eat of that fruit. What? What'd you say? Oh, she did. That you gave me. When you rebel against the government, you're doing exactly what Adam did. Adam didn't have to pay taxes. No, but the word of God said, thou shalt not. The word of God says, you should pay taxes. Jesus said, Peter, I want you to go fishing. I want you to go get a coin and pay the taxes. Jesus paid his taxes. And it sounds like in that case that he really didn't have to pay it, but so there'll be no controversy, go pay it. They came to him, Jesus, do I have to pay taxes? Give me a coin. Yeah. What's it say on it? Caesar. Well, render the Caesar of Caesar. Render the God was God. You know, even the government attached you 100% with the money that says United States of America on it. Don't you think God is able to give you food and raiment to be content thereby? But it says, You rejected the word of the Lord. He has also rejected thee from being king. Uh-oh. Here's someone being rejected as a ruler by God. And Saul said unto Samuel, I have sinned. Yeah, right. You don't mean it. For I had transgressed the commandment of the Lord. Yeah, you did. but you... And thy words, because I feared the people, not God. That's not a confession. Because the confession is he didn't fear God. He, fe he feared the people. Adam, Adam never even confessed. But you know what he feared? His nakedness. And obeyed their voice. He's passing the blame like he did, like Adam did. It's the people's fault. Now, therefore, I pray thee, pardon my sin and turn again with me, and I may worship the Lord. 
And Samuel said unto Saul, I will not return with thee, for thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, and the Lord has rejected thee from being king over Israel. Here's a man that is a ruler, and God says, you're no more. And yet, how many years does he sit on the throne until he dies in battle? And God never recognized. Yeah, it's Obama. He's sitting in the White House. But God don't recognize. Get off Obama. You know, you keep complaining about President Obama. Maybe God will give you someone just as worse as he is with the title of Republican. Ha ha! I don't see the Republicans doing anything that they said they were going to do when you guys put them in office. So, Joseph and Mary are not in Bethlehem. Now there's a problem. There's a big problem. 48 prophecies of the Lord Jesus Christ. There's a problem. Micah 5 2 Pages stop sticking together yet. Don't use sticky tabs in your Bible. And then question why you buy a new Bible that your pages are sticking together. Then you realize why your pages are sticking together. If you use stickies. I went and bought a brand new Bible just because my pages are sticking together. It's because of using stickies. So all my pages are stuck together. Uh, Isaiah, Joel, Amos, Noah, Micah. Five two did I say? I don't know if I said five two. All right, here, okay, here we go. But thou, Bethlehem, Ephrata, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, all right. Here's a city. It's in Judah. It's a little tiny city. Yet out of thee shall he come, God, forth unto me, that is to be the ruler in Israel, whose going forth has been from old, from everlasting. We got a problem. Micah says, though he had no chapter marking and verse marking, he says, that what we just read, chapter 5, verse 2, he says that God is going to come to the Messiah in Bethlehem, Ephrathah. Now, there's two Bethlehem. Now, this is the one particular one that's in Judah. Now, here's my question. Why would Mary and Joseph want to go to, what's it? Little among the thousands of Judah. Why would Mary and Joseph want to go there? And guess what? Something else is a problem. Mary's due date is coming. Jesus has to be born in Bethlehem. And Joseph and Mary have no plans, have no thoughts in going down to Bethlehem. Not in their thoughts. They're in Nazareth. They're in Galilee. Back to Luke. Luke chapter 2. Verse 4, and Joseph also went up from Galilee, that's up north, out of the city of Nazareth, unto Judah, or Judea, Micah, unto a city of David, which is called Bethlehem. Because he was of the house and lineage of David. 
He should have been really living in Bethlehem already. Why would he go there? Do you guys see you Christian government fighters? You tax oppressors. You Tea Party people. God used the government taxation and census to get prophecy done. How am I going to get this husband and wife, of all the husband and wives in the world, one being pregnant, how am I going to get them down to Bethlehem? It's me again. It's in a dream. Go down to Bethlehem. You guys are now, I, I know what Mary, it's Gabriel again. Hey, go down, go down to Bethlehem. No, don't want to do that either. See, I want to get all the Jews where they belong. I want them in a particular place. This this couple. I'm going to call for a taxation. God used census and taxation to get a husband and a wife, a particular man and wife, to a particular place in Scripture to fulfill the 48 prophecies 100%. How's that? Now, let me give you a little thing here. Mm -hmm. what, had, what would happen if the Jews revolted and fought the government and not gone against this taxation of Caesar Augustus? Jesus would never have been born in Bethlehem and Micah 5 2 would have been scratched off the map. And then Jesus Christ wouldn't be the Messiah because the prophecy would have been missed. Can I throw something else out there? Can I be nice to you? Can I really give you a reason? What if your fight against the government today? Your tea parties, whatever you want to call it, we want Republican control. What if your fight against the government, against President Obama, what if you are prolonging the rapture? What if, oh, I want the rapture to happen today, and God's up in heaven. Well, if you stop going against the president I'm giving you, if you just let it go, the rapture would already happen. But I can't let the rapture happen because you won't let me do the politics that needs to be done to set up the Antichrist. I'm not saying President Obama is the Antichrist. I'm saying you won't let me do what needs to be done for the rapture and the tribulation period because you don't like one man I put in office. And yet I used a Roman ruler taxation and census to get Mary and Joseph down in Bethlehem so Jesus will be born according to Micah 5 2 and I had to use that because Joseph and Mary had no plans in ever in their life to visit this one little tiny city God could have had Joseph was, was of Bethlehem, he could have had a wedding. No, he didn't use that. A bar mitzvah, if they had it then, maybe out of time. No, God didn't use that. Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, unto Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, 
because he he he's not thinking Micaiah. Uh, yeah, Micaiah. He's not thinking Micaiah. He said, "I gotta be taxed. Come on, hon. We gotta go down to Bethlehem." Uh, Joseph, I'm nine months pregnant, and you want me to ride that donkey? What are you thinking? We gotta go, babe. We gotta go pay our taxes. And they said, we got to go to Bethlehem where my lineage is. We got to go. Okay. The next time you carry the baby. Well, let's go. Romans 13.1. You know, that was a long, hideous trick for a pregnant woman. Okay, Joseph. Let every soul. Does that say brethren? Does that say Jews? Let every soul. Be subject under the power, being under the power, unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of God, and the powers that be are ordained of God. That be ordained is Obama, Bush, Washington. Queen Mary, Putin, I can't name any more rules. Whosoever therefore resists the power, gonna fight the government. Yay! Whosoever therefore resists the power, resists the ordinance of God. And they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. Not, not, not damnation as in hell. If you're a Christian, you will lose rewards. You will lose fellowship. You are sinning. For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. Cop pulls them from my house. I have no worry. Now, if a cop pulls something from the house of a criminal, he's going to worry. Wilt thou not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. For he, the powers are ordained, is a minister of God. How's that one? For... Um, to thee for good. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid. For he beareth not the sword in vain, capital punishment. For he is a minister of God, again, to verily, verily, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. They're not doing that today. Wherefore ye must needs be subject. This is written under Nero, a Roman ruler lighting Christians after the light of God at his banquets. He would take a Christian, dump them in tar, put them up on a pole, and light them. And that would be his guarding lights. And Paul writes to us. You are to be subject to the power that be. We're not done. Attending continually upon this very thing. Render therefore to all their dues. Tribute to whom tribute is due. Custom to whom custom. That's taxes. 
That's import taxes, and that's taxes. Paul writes that. New Testament. Christ has died, he's buried, he rose from the grave, and sitting at the right hand of the Father, and the Holy Spirit has Paul say, you better be subject to the powers that be, and you're to pay taxes. Now what do you do when a Christian takes over? And tries to fight what God sets up. Back to Luke. Dare not fight the power of God. Luke 2 4. And Joseph also went up from Galilee. Joseph obeys God and he obeys the government. Now he has left Nazareth. Two thirty nine. Two thirty nine. From chapter, uh, from verse four to two thirty nine, and when they had performed all things according to the law of the Lord, he obeyed the government power. He obeys the law of God. They returned unto Galilee to their own city, Nazareth. That's a long trip. Micah 5.2 is finished prophecy by taxation and census. The fulfillment of Micah 5.2 is God telling the Roman government, tax them. And make it a census and make them go to their, their family lineage. And that's where Joseph was to go. Bethlehem. Why are we going to Bethlehem again? Because that's where my family's from. Okay. And Mary is about to give birth. Nazareth. Not Nazarite. It's Lower Galilee, 70 miles north of Jerusalem. It's of the tribe of Zebulun, Genesis 49, verse 13, on a hillside overlooking a rich and beautiful valley. And Luke 4:20. If you want to take a look, 4:29, Matthew 2:23, and John 1:46. Bethlehem is in Judah, six miles south by west of Jerusalem. So you're looking at a 76-mile trip. About away from Nazareth, 76 miles on a donkey. It's also called Ephrathah, which means fruitful. Uh oh. Bethlehem means house of bread. You find in Genesis 48 7, Micah 5 2, it's 26,000 feet above sea level. So not only did they have to travel 76 miles, they had to go 2,700 feet up. And that's not counting any mountains they had to go from Nazareth to Bethlehem. Nine-month pregnant-year-old girl. There are fig trees, almonds, vines, and grain. It is the birthplace of David, 1 Samuel 17, 12, and 5. 1 Samuel 20, verse 6, and 2 Samuel 23, 14. We won't go into that. The house, the lineage on the Roman books, census and taxation. Men and women of Jewish race were recorded, and Jesus' birth would have been recorded in Bethlehem. In the city of David by the Romans. Somewhere, and I don't know if they haven't found it yet, but the records state Joseph and Mary, lineage of David, has appeared in Bethlehem and has paid their taxes. And the next thing we're going to read that comes up Mary is in labor. Her water breaks. 
She has given birth to a baby. We, we're going to get to, he's born in a stable. But what is the most important thing? The angels appearing? No. The shepherds coming? No. Santa Claus? Never. That baby that was born in a manger wrapped in swaddling clothes in Bethlehem is a fulfillment of the 48 prophecies and one of them written in Micaiah 5 too. And what, what does it all do? It came down by taxation and a census. Now, what if Joseph revoked it? What if he said, I won't pay the taxes, I'm not going to go? Think about that when you want to go against the government. Joseph is not saved. Mary is not saved. Yet they obeyed the law of the Bible, and obeyed the law of the God of Israel. The law of uh, they obeyed the law of God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and they obey a Roman, foreign, Gentile, dead dog. Gross! Get out of my house! You guys eat some strange food, Peter and Jonah. They obey. And later on, Jesus is going to come up and say, you pay taxes, you give the government their due. Peter, go fishing, you get the tax money, and go pay it. Now, isn't that a joke that God used what man hates to get his son burnt, born, excuse me, get his son born in a particular spot that needed to be there? And my question rises again as we close. Here's a question. Why else would Joseph and Mary be in Bethlehem? A little city among thousands. Thousands of cities. Even Joseph was in Judea. What, may, what would make him go to Bethlehem? The Roman government. How's that? Was that? 